Well, hi again. This is Scott V in our little town of Santa Fe on an imaginary Feed the Beast world. Today I want to do a quick rundown of uh, the factorization mod, their ore processing technology. Now I have it all set up here, nice and aligned, step by step. Uh, the only real way to power this system is using their solar array which was really fun to build. Uh, I can show you all that in another episode. The main thing to rem remember that's missing from a lot of suggestions is it needs to have this little supply of water in order to run. Then the mirrors point at the solar turbine. The turbine spins, sends the power through the lead wire down into a battery. And from the battery, it can power all those machines. Okay, so down here, The battery box is powering all these machines. And they are in order. A grinder, a mixer, a slag furnace on top of a heater, and then your crystallizer, which is powered by a heater over here. The power all comes through this battery from the solar array upstairs. Now I borrowed some iron ore to show you how this works. Basically, you chuck it in the grinder. The grinder takes a few moments to heat up, as I recall. But while it's doing that, we can take a quick look at the various recipes. It will uh, grind stone into cobble, cobble into gravel. Nothing real different here. There's a couple of ores it works on. There's no, no benefits to these. <coughs> redstone to a single redstone, 650%. So that's that's pretty nice. The real trick with the grinder are the percentages. Dirt, 100%. Diamonds, two and a quarter diamonds per block is certainly a nice recipe if you have silk touch and can get the block. Silk touch lapis lazuli, you can get eight of those. Uh, coal ore, silk touch it, you can get three and a half coal out of each block. Oh, that's a nice recipe. Uh, copper ore turns into 140%. So these are the ones I'm going to show you the basics, the ores that you can get through normal means. Um, you can see it's, it's warmed up. Once it's warmed up, the grinder runs through these pretty quickly, and you should get 140%. So uh, it started at 10. I've done four already. Number six. Uh, each one of these takes, once it's warmed up, about uh, looks like five seconds or so five and five, so I've still got just ten units of ore here. And while that's processing, I'm going to move on to the next phase. Let's see, six, okay. So we'll let the grinder do its thing. You really have to work in parallel or this will take a very long time. Start off with three buckets in your mixer. It should say mixer up here, but it doesn't. The mixer is also really quick. The downside is that you have to keep refilling the buckets manually, so it's literally like you're just standing here personally, just soaking this gravel. Um, the ore gravel is dirty. You're mixing it with water to get clean ore gravel. And you will see the result is clean ore gravel, I mean clean iron chunks, empty bucket, and then sludge, which is kind of useless. You can turn it into clay if you want. Here's my infinite pow infinite water source, and I'll put another bucket in. So this part of the process here is just really clunky and takes most of the uh, time. It really can't be automated as far as I know. If you have red power installed, I suppose you could have a deployer go and uh, fill these buckets for you. But this Feed the Beasts version does not have red power. so. I am the power. I am the bucket man. So we remember we started off with um, just 10 units of, of iron. We've already got 12. We've got 9 processing and 3 clean iron chunks. Let me fill one more bucket. Bucket man. Bucket man. Does whatever a bucket can. 
All right, so there's that bucket. And I'm going to move on to the next part of the process where the slag furnace will process your clean chunks. It t technically, a slag furnace doesn't have to be on a heater. You, it will take coal, but it uses about four units of coal. I think each unit of coal can only burn four chunks. And here you see it doubled that chunk. You're going to end up with reduced iron chunks at this stage. Only got one out of that one. It's pretty fast. This stage is pretty fast. So we got one out of that one. And one out of that one. So I bet we're out of uh, water. Almost. Bucket man, bucket man, bucket brigade. I want my chunks. Give me my chunks. Here we go. Bucket, bucket. No, I am not using bad language. Uh. Bucket, bucket. A world for a bucket. Here we go. So, like I say, the the mixer part is pretty uh, mixed review wise, but you know, it's kind of you get into a vibe. Certainly, the uh, the slag furnace section here is is nice and uh, quick. And let's see, double that one. Let's see if I can double this one. Nope. So I've got eight here. How many pieces do I have? Eight here. Nine. So I'm up to 14 pieces of iron. It's pretty nice. Technically, in here, you can get put a bucket of water, you can put dirt, and you can put the sludge in there to turn it back into clay. And one reason that's kind of relevant is because it takes a lot of clay to make these machines in the uh, the coils. Uh, some another video I will show you how these machines are actually made. But uh, for now, just it's nice you can use the sludge to make clay. I just throw it in my uh, industrial craft recycler and make fertilizer. Anyway, let's see if I can double some of these guys. The slag furnace takes your clean iron chunks, makes reduced iron chunks. One, double it, and one more. So we got 12 units so far. 13, 14, 15 units so far. So you know it is duplicating the ore. Certainly, if you just want to double your ore, but the macerator is simple and, er, you know, obviously a macerator or the uh, pulverizer and thermal expansion will do it. My infinite power water source seems to have become less infinite. Oh, I killed it. In the future, I'm going to put a water tank uh, directly behind here, so I'll just be able to take the bucket and go water tank, water tank. Uh, that's the space I'm leaving right there for my water tank. And let's see, this should be the last unit. And like I say, I'll just recycle the sludge, though. Uh, it can be turned into clay. Okay, so here's my iron chunks. And at this stage, Let's run this through, and while we're at the slag furnace, there's one other really neat thing about the slag furnace. Um, and there, which rest is your silver ore. Now this is a weird one. You can take, if you, if you can uh, silk touch your iron ore, you can get sometimes the stone and the iron back out. I'm not sure why I would want to do that. The really handy one here is the silver ore. Silver ore, let me see. The silver ore, which is inserted into world by the factorization mod, will actually come out as silver and lead in the slag furnace. S and since you need a lot of silver and lead to make these machines, uh, the silver is used pretty much for the mirrors up top. The lead is all used in creating these machines down below. So by all means, burn your silver ore in the slag furnace. And you'll get silver and lead. Now let's see what the score is here. This has currently stopped. Does that mean it's nighttime? Oh, there we go. 17. I have 17 reduced iron chunks. We started with 10. 
Now here's the part that just drives people crazy. I just don't know why this is so slow. Your crystallizer runs off of a heater that's connected to the lead wire. Let me see here. You give it some sulfuric acid, which as far as I know never gets used up. I've had this in here for days. The each cycle takes 20 minutes, but the saving grace is that you can do up, it will process up to five units per cycle. So I put 17 in, and as you can see, the progress bar is not moving yet. It takes 20 minutes, and what it will do is go through all of these. In this case, it will process one from each pile, process five of them times 140, 150 percent, so it will probably give me seven crystalline iron sometimes six, seven, uh, maybe eight. So something in that range for each, each run through. So it's going to do three runs of five, which probably give me seven each, which is 21. And then this last run will probably give me three. So I'll probably end up with 24. I could end up with 28 or so, uh, starting with just 10 iron. But the thing to do here is just get on with your life. Uh, go do some other things and come back to this later, which we're going to do. I'm going to pause this and remember to come back here in a little while. Came back and you can see we're just about done. And there we go. We ended up with 25 crystalline iron when we started with 10 ores. Now that's not the 300 percent, but you know that they talk about. But uh, that that's only kind of a, a target. Each step of the process has a chance of increasing the yield a certain amount. I had a batch yesterday that got about 320 percent. So, uh, you know, it's really probably not worth it for, for common stuff. For, for gold, it's nice to multiply it as much as you can. Um, one thing I wanted to do, it's, it's funny if you check the recipes. Uh, in a crystallizer, milk plus lime dye equals slime balls. And I currently need a bunch of those, so I'm really curious to see if it takes that. It is heating up. I wonder if you can do multiples. Hasn't broken it yet. Because milk doesn't stack, so I'm really curious how this goes. And it doesn't seem to mind that there's sulfuric acid in here or not. After some quick thought, <coughs> I figured I'd rearrange my uh, slime recipe here the way you see it on the screen. Uh, this interface is actually really forgiving about rearranging stuff. Now if I pull one of these out, it's still a valid recipe. Uh, it's interesting having the six slots because this way during the 20-minute uh, period, it should process three pairs of ingredients and give me three times the output for that 20 minute wait as opposed to if I had all of the lime dye in one batch then that would just probably process one one batch from the entire 20 minute wait so um, that, that's why when I put the metals here I fill in all of these if you put just one glob of metal I, you'd, you'd process one glob one stack per cycle uh, really looks like you can get some some uh, optimization by how you arrange the items in these crystallizer recipes. But uh, anyway, just wanted to see how this one works because I definitely need slime balls for something. Of course, if I could remember what it is I need them for, that would really help. But that's the way of the world. <coughs> Here was the final result from that uh, milk experiment. Uh, now I took out three of these uh, slime balls already to make something else. I needed them for a uh, water tank for railcraft. Uh, but look, it didn't use the milk. I ended up with getting uh, the six slime balls and the milk is unused. Really a bizarre recipe. Anyway, thought you'd find that interesting. Uh, talk to you next time.